Ask the Messengers TV show is a TV show that educates, informs, and entertains our viewers on public health issues such as mental illness, suicide, addiction, illness and disease, COVID-19 relief, crime, domestic violence, homelessness, human trafficking, employment opportunities, health care, and more. And now, Ask the Messengers. Today on Ask the Messengers, we bring you another amazing author series with Kimberly Mallory. Kimberly's guest today is Ja Irvin, author of The Seven Principles of Entrepreneurship. How committed are you to success? Also, some words of encouragement from one of her previous guest authors, Monica Soren, author of PPE, Pray, Prophecy, and Execute. Plus, Depression is something that many of us have experienced at some point in our lives. Alicia Renee is here today to share her story about depression and how she found her way back from out of a dark place. And she also has some words of encouragement for anyone who is suffering in silence. Also, women are not the only ones who suffer with depression. We are going to break the stigma about depression in men. Yes, men suffer in silence too. Ask the Messengers begins now. Welcome to Ask the Messengers. We have with us today on the author series, Ja Irvin. I mean, you have such an amazing book. As I was reading over your book, we can really dive right into it. So I see that the name of your book is The Seven Love Principles of Entrepreneurship. Okay, how committed are you to succeed? Yes, yes, yes. So, Ja, tell us a little bit about this book. Tell us a little bit about you first, and then jump right into your book. Yes, yes. Um, thank you, Miss Kimberly, for allowing me to speak on Ask the Messengers. It's such a blessing um, and honor to be here. Um, I first want to let everybody know my name is Ja. Um, so when I first started out, I actually um, uh, uh, come from FAMU. Um, I actually went to school for theater and public relations. So I always wanted to be like, you know, that girl on TV, like the Tyler Perry of it all. Um, but it just so happens my senior year, I actually had my baby girl. So I had to really, you know, make some shift changes as far as getting finances in order now. And so when I was on the road to doing that, um, I actually ran into a company that was teaching me entrepreneurship as long and then also showing me the money game, how money works and different things like that. So during this, everybody knows when you're an entrepreneur, the journey is not the cookies and cream like people think it is, right? They think that you, you go immediately, you're living this luxury lifestyle, but it's a process, you know, everything has a process. So I definitely learned self-development through that process. And just so happened um, when I was on my journey to um, go straight into entrepreneurship, here's the pandemic taking place as well. And so it, it took a lot of people off their pivot for most, but for me, I didn't want that to be my story. I wanted to come out being positive, showing something that, that I did. And so that's what made me say, you know what? I wanna write a book. I've been in the house reading all these inspiring, inspirational books. Why can't I be an author to one? And it just so happens um, everybody's on the internet, they're connecting. And so I actually ran across this awesome woman named Reverend Rita um, with Fivefold Publishing. So she really uh, helped me on this journey because she she showed me the, the, the steps on how to start. Because I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew this is something that I wanted to do. So I'm very grateful for her even in that process. So I started to write this book to show other people, other women, that you can do it too. Like many people feel like when you're on a journey, um, going through through life that, okay, listen, when I start entrepreneurship, I have to be this, I have to be that. And sometimes we don't understand and we get kind of lost trying to juggle life yes. and doing this. And I just wanted people to know and understand that you can do both. It's possible. Right. You can do both. Right. That, now that's some valid, very valid information. Now, not only are you an author, I had did some research on you. And as I read your book, you're a mother, a financial broker, a life insurance agent, and you have your BA from A&M University, your CEO of, what is it, Solage? So her name is Sage. 
sage, okay, yes, apparel. And wait a minute. And here's the kicker audience. She's still in her 20s. <laughs> and so that, that just tells you that when you're motivated and you are on a mission, that you can accomplish anything. So, you know, I'm just so in awe with you. Just tell us a little bit about you. Tell us about you. Tell us about the things that's in your book that's going to help somebody to maybe become an entrepreneur. So, like I said first, the road, it is, it is a road. It is a journey. But I'm telling you, it's worth it. I would um, encourage everybody to let them know that it's totally worth it. Like I said, one of my biggest things were I remember um, leaving college and then I started working at Target immediately after. And I just saw myself and I was like, you know what? The environment was nice. I loved it. But this is not where I saw myself working long term. I saw myself being an owner of something, having that ownership. And I wanted to set that example for my daughter. And so here I am going on lunch break, trying to decide, should I get a burger or do I just save this money for diapers? right? We're always picking and choosing. Should I do this or should I do that? And I just wanted to show people that we can do both. Wow. I don't want my decisions and choices to, to hold me down like that. I want to be able to choose, should I, should I pick the Range Rover or the Mercedes, right? Those are the type of decisions that I want to make hard. Like for me, those will be considered hard decisions for me. Which nail color when I go to the nail shop? Not wow. hard life decisions, like those. And so I wanted to show everyone, like, go pursue your dreams, especially when it comes to children. Most people may feel like, oh, I had this child. They helped me back. No, really, your child pushes you. If that's not enough motivation, you yourself can be motivated with just within, with or without a baby. But I just want them to know, listen, keep going, pursue your dreams. Life is what you make it and it's what you create it to be. Ooh, go ahead and preach, girl. Yes. <laughs> I am just so proud of you, you know, to be in your 20s and your mindset that you have is really taking you far. You know, I'm reading through your book and I'm just amazed. I am in awe. Some of the things that you talk about in your book that's really going to help people to not just become an entrepreneur, but it's going to help to motivate people. I was reading your book and I was like, yes, yes. You know, it had really motivated me. Like maybe I need to do better. You know, it got me thinking about some things. That's what I love about your book. And so what did you learn about yourself when you wrote your book? That it exposes you as an individual, whether good or bad, you find your, your high qualities, you find your low qualities. But one thing that I discovered um, when writing my book and doing this was that I can actually finish something that I start. So many of us, we start something, life can happen, or we just may get that, what they call writer's block. And then you just want to quit. You just want to give up. But again, like I said, I met um, the beautiful uh, woman, uh, Reverend Rita with Fivefold Publishing. And with her, she helped me every step of the way. Really, she was just there to help with the book cover, uh, you know, and then just help edit it. But she, she really did more. She helped me with more. She was like, listen, you format it like this. Because I didn't know what I was doing. And yeah. then she went ahead and already made my book cover for me. So when you have the cover sitting in your face, that's motivation enough to say, I have to finish this. Yes. I went this far. I got to see it through. So it was a blessing for me to even say, oh, my gosh, I can look back and say I'm an author. Like I can literally go down in history saying that about myself. And I just wanted to do something that I knew that would make me proud. Wow. That is so awesome. And let me just say that um, Reverend Rita Henderson from Fivefold Publishing Company also published my book. Oh, wow. So, you know, <laughs> she has taken me, you know, isn't it something, it's a small yeah. world. It's yeah. really a small world because that is exactly who got my um, cover, my book cover, who helped me write that book when I was crying. Like, I don't want to do it. Yeah, she was like, awesome. fuck it up. You know, I mean, really, it's amazing how so many people out here. And one thing that she talks about as well is there's so many people out here that really wants to write a book or needs to write a book. And then they take it to their grave. Yes. You know, so, you know, just to to write a book is an amazing thing in itself. But can you imagine how many people you're helping with or through your book? 
Yes. So, you know, I, I appreciate you so much being on the show. But what I want you to do right now, even though you've given us so many words <laughs> of encouragement already, I would like for you to just look into that camera right now and give someone some words of encouragement. Somebody that maybe wants to be an entrepreneur, somebody that maybe wants to write a book or somebody that just maybe needs some encouragement because like you said, they decided that, oh, now that I have a child, I need to give up. Give that person some words of encouragement. The encouragement that I would say to anyone watching this, any viewer, is continue to look and become that better version of yourself. Yes. Always strive to improve. Always go after what you love. Don't ever give up. Continue to pursue your dreams no matter what, because that person within is still there and ready to come out. You yeah. said something very powerful with going to your grave. I was always taught this, this message. You want to go to your grave empty and not full. And what that means is I poured out the best me upon this earth. And that's true legacy. People at the bottom line, we want to leave that legacy, that foundation. Becoming your best self is going to walk you right into your purpose, that person that you're supposed to come, become and the person that you're meant to be. So I would say go after it, find it, but it all, it all starts with you. Stay tuned for more of Ask the Messengers. What if being in recovery from a mental or substance use disorder was something we proudly showed the world? Millions of people are in recovery, sharing hope and support with family, friends, and community. Join the Voices for Recovery. For confidential information for mental and substance use disorders, call 1-800-662-HELP. I suffer from depression. My name is Felicia Renee. I, I, was, I was just in a real dark place. Like I, sorry, my, I blocked everybody from calling my phone. Um, all my kids was gone. I just felt like everything was gone. I like I lost everything, like everything. And I thought about it. Then I went to like, I don't know, why am I thinking I got my kids to the fuck? And I went back like, uh, you know, screw this. They'd be all right, you know. Then it was like, no, it was just the thought that really scared me. And I don't ever want to, you know, go back to that point again. And I vowed to myself that I wouldn't. Listen, my advice for you: if you ever feel like you, you falling down and you just feel like you could never get back up and it's the end of the world. It's not. Whenever you feel that way, I'm telling you, it's always something good that's gonna come behind that. Whether you feel like it's gonna happen sooner, it's gonna happen, you know, not gonna happen at the, the time of your speed, but it's gonna happen. Like, don't never give up. You always got yourself. Yourself is all you need. You have to be your biggest supporter, your biggest fan. You have to love yourself. Because if you don't, who else will? You feel me? I had to learn that. For a long time, I did not love myself. I was forever loving everybody else and didn't realize I needed to love myself. And when I had that last breakdown, I realized that. And from faith, I just been chugging on. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Because when you shut that light, you sh it goes dark. It's nothing else. You leaving this world and leaving everybody else with the same people they living on and happy and everybody else that you feel that hated you probably you know still gonna hate you it's not gonna change anything all you do is i feel like just boss up level up don't give up providers are defining it also what we know from the literature is there's just a lot of stigma around men seeking help for any kind of mental health problems as well as physical issues. So while women have been diagnosed traditionally with depression two to three times more often than men, men are committing suicide at rates of four to six times more often. They use more lethal means and they're successful in their attempts far more often than women. Fortunately, there's beginning to be more research looking at how we get men to be more open and to acknowledge that seeking help is actually a sign of strength, not weakness. And I think that's an incredibly important area of research that we need a lot more work on. Um, I wanted to do better in school. I wasn't do doing better in school and so I was feeling like a constant failure. I was feeling a lot of self-loathing, self-hatred. 
Um, aside from that, and more importantly, my, my sister had been having chronic health issues for about 10 years at that point. And at that point, we weren't sure if she was just going to get worse and die, or if she was going to reach a state of dementia, or what was going to happen. And for me, just being able to stand by and watch it happen was extremely difficult and painful. And I didn't want my parents to have two children that were dysfunctional like that. So I tried to hold all my emotions inside and pretend like nothing was wrong. And a combination of those two things, just holding all that pain, self-hatred inside and not talking about it was something that just made it really difficult for me and I started having suicidal thoughts and the only thing I would feel was anger or sadness. That was my state of being and I realized that that wasn't something I wanted. That's not how I wanted to live my life and I didn't want to end my life. So I reached out um, and you know what, things still come up but nowadays if I'm, if I recognize those emotions are coming back then I make sure to talk to someone. I make sure to spend time with friends. I used to isolate a lot. And you know, I still work on spending time with friends and people I care about. Um, making sure I get a good night's sleep. Exercise is really important for me. Um, the main thing though is just spending time with people and being able to talk about things because you know, spending every night at home alone and not talking about how you feel is just a pretty bad combination and so now I, I know how to do that and I can work through those emotions and that's been really, really important for me to be able to get to the point where I can live my life and actually enjoy it as opposed to just focusing on I think I'm a big tough fireman. I'm supposed to uh, I'm supposed to be able to deal with anything. I'm supposed to be able to, you know, just pick up, carry on, like uh, like the old commissioner said, just be able to suck it up and just keep going. Um, it's not that easy. You know, you can't just do that. It's if, if you try to, it's just gonna come back up again and again and again. Being Latino made it harder because there's this silence over things. There's just things that you don't talk about. And um, when I told my parents I had depression, I was like, look, mom, I'm depressed. You know, I can't deal with things anymore. I don't think I can finish school. My mom was like, you're not depressed. Your brother went through, through, through a period. You know what, you're gonna get over it. I lost my daughter, my firstborn child. My daughter, Libby, she was a very active athlete. She was a swimmer, had some of the fastest times in the country when she was around 10 years old. But around 12 or 13, she began to struggle with depression. While she was in therapy, uh, it allowed her to uh, go on through life. She graduated from college, uh, started a family, uh, took on a job. Friends and her new family were not supportive of her going to see a a shrink, going to see a psychologist or a therapist or being on medication. And so she too often tried to deal with it without the support and without the medication that helped her. My daughter Libby was 36 years old uh, when she, she took her own life. Yeah, so if you have any sense that you might be depressed, please don't wait to go talk to a health professional. That could be your family physician, that could be a mental health professional. We'll be right back with more of Ask the Messengers. What if being in recovery from a mental or substance use disorder was something we proudly showed the world? Millions of people are in recovery, sharing hope and support with family, friends, and community. Join the Voices for Recovery. For confidential information for mental and substance use disorders, call 1-800-662-HELP. I am 
a survivor of, of uh, suicide. I went from being bankrupt to debt free, from unhealthy to vitality, from outcast to ministry leader, from marriage breaking to a stronger marriage than ever, right? I went from living in a basement to coming into home ownership. Be yourself, but be authentic. Well, that concludes this week's episode of Ask the Messengers. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, if you would like to support our show, please feel free to make a donation of any amount by visiting our show website, www.askthemessengers.org. If you prefer to mail donations, please make your check or money orders payable to Ask the Messengers TV show and send to 18400 Schaefer Highway, Detroit, Michigan, 48235. Ask the Messengers is a program that deals with things that help you. Thank you for watching.